Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome back to Marginal Gains. Today's video is a look at the four main structures you get access to once you've progressed from phase one, that being the village phase, through to phase two, otherwise known as the town phase. Now these are all useful in their own ways and you'll need to build four of them in order to progress. So that could be one of each, or four of one type, or basically anything in between. It's really your call. But after watching this video, you'll be in a better position to decide what the best formulation is for you and your playstyle. So let's fire it up. So the four types of building and structure are the blacksmith, the market, the temple, and the tower. But before we look at those, I'll briefly touch on a couple of things that you'll need to bear in mind in relation to this topic. The first is that there are a few other structures available for specific factions, like the Hellenic Royal Stoa or the Gaulish Tavern, but these are covered in their respective faction overviews and also in an upcoming video about the generic faction types. So keep an eye out for those if you'd like more information, as unfortunately they're out of scope in this video. Also, you'd be quite within your rights to wonder why onward expansions and civic centres aren't covered. This is because if you build a new civic centre, military colony or island settlement, while it may seem logical that as these can't be built in the village phase, they'd count towards your four structures, you are sadly wrong. The basic rationale is that although you can't build them in phase one, as you start the game with a civic centre, it counts as a village phase building. This logic is then extended to the aforementioned military colonies and the island settlement. So sorry about that. I know that when I use the Ptolemies, I always make a military colony to get those sweet swordsmen in phase two. So I'm frustrated that it doesn't count as a phase two uh, structure, but them's the breaks, I guess. So finally, just before we look at the nature of the buildings, let's remind ourselves of what resources we need in order to progress from the town phase to the city phase. And the simple answer to that is 750 each of the mineral resources, those being stone and metal. Therefore, whether the structures cost one of the mineral resources to build, as well as the amount of time it takes to build them, will have an impact on how quickly you can progress to the city phase. And as we all know, that's where you're going to get access to heroes and siege weapons, and with them, a big advantage in the quest for victory. So, let's look at the details of the structures, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each of them. The blacksmith is one of the few buildings in the game that has the same cost for all factions, 200 wood. And its role is to give access to armour and attack upgrades. Now all of these upgrades cost stone, metal or both, so you're going to have to ask yourself, are you going to use these in phase 2, when you really need those resources in order to progress? And although it may seem it, this isn't actually a loaded question, you could very well want to. And in that case, you're going to give your troops a massive advantage in battle. So if you're planning a phase 2 attack, perhaps because having successfully rushed you've already built a development advantage and you want to continue a relentless attack, then getting upgrades could be more useful than progressing to phase 3 as you can pin your opponent down and restrict their options. It's certainly not inconceivable that you can win games in this manner. However, this isn't a tactic for beginners. You're going to need to know your faction, your enemy's faction, their playing style, the map, the biome, among other things, to justify this kind of attack and really make it work. So be careful. That said, the fact that the blacksmith costs only wood, and that you're going to need its upgrades badly come phase 3 in order to compete, means it's certainly not a building you should avoid building, even though it takes the joint longest of the main structures to get one up. It's more that you should consider it as an investment for the future, rather than something that's going to help you to immediately in the majority of cases. So let's sum up. Now the market is the only building that, for me anyway, is absolutely essential in the town phase. And as far as I'm concerned, it should be the first building that you build. And that's because it allows you to get stone and metal without having to mine for it. You can simply trade off any excess food and wood. Now the reason I believe this should always be the first building that you build is because if you build your market first, you're going to get the best trading prices for food and wood. If one or more opponents has already flooded the figurative market with these commodities, then the amount of stone or metal that you'll get in exchange for 100 food or wood is going to be massively reduced. Therefore, being first doesn't just get you the best prices, it also stops your opponent from getting those prices, and that means it's not just a boon for you, but it causes problems for them. 
But the market's not just useful at phase two. You're going to need it during the whole game as it's essential to regulate your economy when the battle is fully underway. Because at this point, it's easy to get low on one or more resources and have an excess of another. It's basically one of the most important buildings in the game. And that means on the flip side, it's also the first of your enemy's buildings that you should look to destroy if you get the chance. This could very well cripple their economy, or at least make it easier for you to starve them of a particular resource, as they're then going to have to extract it rather than be able to exchange or trade for it. So, pros and cons then? And so the temple, which is definitely a building that I'd recommend, although at this point I'm going to confess that I frequently forget to build it as soon as I should as I'm so focused on getting my market up and running. Now although they cost the most stone of all the buildings on offer and take the same amount of time as a blacksmith to build, I can't think of any example where you wouldn't want one of these. And this is made even more the case if you're playing as a Celtic faction because the stone cost is replaced by wood and that's just amazing. Now they allow you to reinforce your front line and give you healers as well as basically what is a small hospital, as if you stand near the building, you're going to heal your troops. And it's for this reason that you should try and pick battles under its cover, as your troops are going to heal while its opponents are not going to heal. And so all other things being equal, you're going to win that engagement. Because of this, it's worth holding off building this until you get nearer to the front line, as the healing bonus is far less useful if there's not going to be any battles nearby. So in all, it's not as important to get up as quickly as a market, because it's better to wait for a good location to become available, but it's still definitely on my list as a phase two building that you should build as soon as practical, particularly if you can use it to reinforce an onward expansion. Finally, it's the only one of the buildings mentioned that for every single faction will add to your population cap. And the five extra soldiers it offers can make a huge difference in collecting resources. And that's another positive. So enough chat, why don't we just sum these up now? The Defence Tower is an excellent choice at Phase 2. These structures offer supporting fire and protection for garrison troops and therefore can be used to help maintain onward expansions. They can also be used to offer covering fire of mineral deposits that are going to be contested at some point. That ensures that your opponent can't benefit from them and helps your workers to be the ones bringing home the wood, stone and metal in the centre of the map. The main concern you're going to have is that they cost stone to build and that's stone that could be used in getting you to the city phase. However, this is far outweighed by their general usefulness and the fact that they're one of the quicker structures to build, except for in the case of Iberians who have super strong towers with an extra garrison capacity. So it's surprising if a player doesn't build at least one of these during the town phase. So in summation... And that's the four main structures covered. Hopefully with this information you can now decide the best combination that works for your playstyle. If you're a turtler, then defensive towers and well protected trade routes could be your best option, but if you like to expand quickly and take the fight to your enemy, then towers, temples and blacksmith upgrades could be the order of the day. Obviously, any additional structures available to your specific faction could also impact your choice, as could the map and biome. But variety is the spice of life, and having this information puts you in a far better position to tailor the buildings required to progress to your specific needs. And with that, I think we're done here. So thanks as always for watching, like, subscribe, do all that other stuff to make sure you don't miss out on new videos, and I'll see you the next time. Obrigado e adeus do pequeno Portugal.